to Christian friends, brothers and sisters in God's family. <coughs> Picture dad sitting in his favorite chair, reading about the Green Bay Packers, the Milwaukee Brewers, and the sports section. As a sixth grade year old, sixth grade son comes bursting in the room, Dad, Dad, uh-huh, I got my report card, I've got four A's. That's nice, son, goes back to reading his paper. Well, his son kind of sees his dad isn't really paying too much attention. He says, oh yeah, and by the way, Dad, I also got two F's. That's nice, son, goes back to reading his paper. Would you think that someone simply is not listening? Listening is half of communication, and simply, many people don't do it very well, especially with the people that they love. And sometimes, we don't try very hard to understand, or we just don't want to hear what they want to talk to us about, because it might mean that they're asking us to do something that we might not want to do. And sometimes people have that same problem with God. They simply will not hear what God has to say to them, and of course they won't be found in church either to hear his word. Or well, they might be like you and I. We, we go into church and there may be some things that uh, God says that maybe we aren't too comfortable with, and we'd rather choose what we want to hear and do. Because God just might expect us that we need to change certain things in our lives. Today, in God's word, we see the Lord coming to a young man by the name of Samuel. As we take a look at his story, we see also that God is speaking to us. We take that as our theme. And we ask two questions. One is, do you recognize his voice? And secondly, are you listening to him? When the Lord called young Samuel in the middle of the night, he did not recognize God's voice. And that's not su surprising because God had not been talking directly to people at that time because they had become very apathetic to God's word. They simply were not listening. They had resisted his word. But since from the age of three years old, Samuel had been brought to the temple because his mother, even in her older age, had vowed that if the Lord would give her a son, she would dedicate his life to the Lord. And now he was a young man, but he had been serving his Lord in the temple, helping out perhaps with his sacrifices, filling the oil lamps, uh, sweeping, cleaning up, but also helping out the high priest Eli. And Eli, we're told about him, one night Eli, whose eyes were becoming so weak that he could barely see, was lying down in his usual place, the lamp of God had not yet gone out, and Samuel was lying down in the temple of the Lord where the ark of God was. And suddenly, he heard a voice. Samuel, Samuel. Of course, Samuel woke up, and he, he ran over to Eli to see what, what he needed. Here I am, you called me. But Eli said, I did not call. You go back and lie down. But then it happened again, a second time. And we're also told in verse 7, now Samuel did not know the Lord. The word of the Lord had not yet been revealed to him. That doesn't mean he did not know the Lord by faith. He certainly was a believer. But he did not know the Lord by personal experience, direct experience. Even though Samuel would someday become one of God's greatest prophets of his time, yet that had not yet happened. He had not physically heard God speak to him. And then the third time when this happened, Eli figured it out, and he tells Samuel, when he calls you again, say, Lord, speak, for your servant is listening. And so he did that. Speak, for your servant is listening. I think many people today would like to have that same experience, have the Lord speak to them directly. And some people say, oh, yeah, they claim that God gives them special messages. The Lord spoke to me. The Lord told me about this and that. Well, when I hear that, especially from some of the TV preachers, I get a bit skeptical. Because the, even though the Lord can do whatever he wants, he no longer does that. That's not his normal way of speaking to us. You see, even though it was expected in the days of Samuel, it was, it's no longer expected today. 
The Lord has made that very clear in the New Testament. In these last days, God has spoken to us by his Son. And the words of his Son have been written down for our learning through the Scriptures. We may not have heard with our own ears the voice of God calling our name as, as Samuel did. At the same time, the Lord tells us in the, in the Bible, I have redeemed you, I call you by name. You are mine. He knows our names, and he calls us through the pages of the scripture. He speaks to us personally. He has many wonderful things to tell us about himself. And as he reveals himself to us, he tells us about his love for you and me. He tells us about the strength that he can give to us in times of trouble. He tells us how he blesses us and how we will know the way to heaven as we listen and pay attention to his word and the comfort that he can give us and how he transforms our hearts and our minds by hearing that word as he speaks to us. And if life is terribly confusing at times, if your marriage seems to be coming apart, if you're struggling through life in total confusion, perhaps you need to pick up that Bible that might be, get, be getting a little bit dusty and those cobwebs, those spiritual cobwebs that have been forming on your heart and mind need to be cleared up as you listen to the word that God wants to give to you. Too often, sinful apathy is what happens to people where they no longer take God very seriously. It really doesn't matter all that much what he says. You see, when you read your Bible, do you ever get excited? Excited to know the fact that the almighty creator of heaven and earth wants to speak to you, wants to give you all kinds of blessings through his word, I think some people would get more excited if they were a Packer fan and Aaron Rodgers came to their house to talk to them. But what about God? Is the Bible just another book for you? There is no better book in all the world than God's Word and what it can do in us, through us, and for us. It has this marvelous ability to cause our faith to grow and then make us stronger to face the difficulties of life but to prepare us not only for this life, but most of all, for the life to come, to make us stronger. But we, God can make us stronger through that, but there's something that we have to do also with all of this. You see, take a, think about that farmer. He cultivates the land, he plants the seed, he irrigates at times. He's got to do something. And God, though, gives the increase, doesn't he? Farmer can do all of that, but nothing's going to happen as a farmer if, if God doesn't give the increase. Now take that for reading your Bible. If you don't read your Bible, how can you get the blessings that God wants to give to you and the guidance there? We need to take our Bibles. We need to open it up. We need to know what he says to us because there God speaks to us. But there again comes the crunch, isn't it? Sometimes we simply don't want to listen because he's going to tell us things we need to do or ought to be doing if we want to show our thankfulness to him. And what are those things? Yes, I want you to be kind and loving and forgiving to that person who has hurt you. Well, my sinful nature really doesn't want me to do that. You know, to speak well of people, don't tear them down. Build them up. Well, I don't know about that. You know, and that person doesn't deserve that. But our mind wants to twist and turn the different things of God's word. Or maybe there are those things that God says don't do, and you go ahead and do them anyway. Yeah, I know it's not right to use God's name in vain. I know I shouldn't lie, but, you know, that's just life. Everybody does it. It goes on and on. We don't always like to hear God's law being told to us, things, the good things we ought to be doing and don't do, and that's things we should not do, but do. And are we listening when God is speaking to us? Samuel's a good example when he said, speak, Lord, for your servant is listening in all humility. And the message that he heard was not a very pleasant one. The message that he was to pass on to the high priest, Eli, the very next day was a strong warning to him, a warning to him because of his impenitence, because of his lack of control over his wicked sons who had women and sexual relationships in the temple. 
who didn't care about God in one way or another. How hard it must have been for Samuel to tell the high priest Eli that his family would be cut off, they would be killed, they would no longer be serve as priests in God's temple. And what was Eli's reaction to all this? Nothing. He did not repent, nor did he put a stop to the wickedness of his sons. If only he would have listened, God could have changed the outcome, but he simply did not. When God speaks to us, are we ready to do everything that he tells us in the scriptures, or do we pick and choose, or ignore it like Eli did? Everyone likes to hear the story of God's love and all the wonderful things God does for us. And that little baby Jesus in the cradle, and we can go on and on with all the wonderful stories. But what if God speaks to us through the pastor, or through a board of elders member, or through a Christian friend, who points out sin in our lives and how we need to change from a sinful way of living. When that word of God condemns us, people don't want to hear that, and they want to dismiss it and get away from it, or say, well, everybody does it, so that makes it okay. You see, God says you cannot serve both God and money, and yet the job comes first. I can't come to church. I'm too busy. I'm working. Well, I need these things. And you put God behind second fiddle. Flee sexual immorality. Do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit? Yeah, but God gave me these sexual impulses. And so if it feels good, it's got to be okay. The Lord says, there is no God beside me. I kill and I make alive. Yeah, but Lord, that, ba that baby in my, myself is going to... Uh, ruin my life, I need to have an abortion. Or you know, Lord, my grandma's suffering so much, the quality of life has really gone down. It'd be better if she were, if we'd help assist her in her death. Instead of saying with Samuel, speak, O Lord, for your servant is listening, we'd like to turn it around and say, Lord, I know better. Hmm. And there's so many messages that we get in this world to try and rationalize sin or make it seem okay. And so God's word gets watered down by so many other messages we hear over and over again and we start to adopt the thinking of this world around us. People struggle with the idea that this world was made in six natural days. People struggle with the idea of homosexuality because it can be such a loving relationship. And of course then you have wonderful person like Ellen DeGeneres on television that shows how, how great she is. And if you stand up for scriptures, you're going to be labeled as a, as a bigot, as an ir irrational person. There's many Christians that have fallen into that trap, that don't think that homosexual, homosexuality is a sin. And yet God says very clearly, this is God speaking, do not be deceived, neither the sexually immoral, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor male prostitutes, nor homosexual offenders, nor thieves, nor the greedy, nor drunkards, nor slanderers, nor swindlers will inherit the kingdom of God. If people do not listen to God speaking to them and choose to deliberately go on sinning, there is no sacrifice left. There is no Christ for them, only a hell that will be waiting for them. We need to listen, really pay attention to what God says to counteract all the messages that we hear from everywhere else. Consider that frog in a, in a kettle that's being heated up. They feel this is nice and cozy and warm, and as it gets hotter and hotter, refuses to jump out and finally is cooked. The Lord promises, blessed are those who hear God's word and keep it, do it, obey it, follow it. Not just taking half of it, you know, hear it and let the, let the rest go. That's like the person who's, who's watching that exercise video to think that that's going to help them as they sit there on the couch eating away at a bucket of ice cream. That doesn't do any good. We are to be doers of the word and not just hearers only. May the Lord guide us to recognize that he not only speaks to us in the Bible, but we need to put it into practice. Or as the old Nike commercial said, just do it. Just do it. 
Why? Because God said so. And you will be blessed. And then he reminds us as we listen. And as we have sinned, and we do sin each day as much as we try not to, he reminds us your sins are forgiven through the blood of Jesus Christ. Do you need to hear that over and over again? Absolutely, because the devil's right there to try and tell you God could never forgive you for what you just did. And yet he does, all through the love and the grace that he gives to us day after day. Samuel's life was never the same after that. He became that great prophet Samuel, going from town to town, doing God's will. And when we listen to God, our lives will be changed too. God has this wonderful way of transforming us into the people that he wants us to be. And he blesses us along the way. That word that penetrates our souls, it can be like a cutting sword, digging deep to show us our sins, but it can also be that healing, soothing. Balm is what the Bible calls it, that heals our broken hearts and shows us that love and that forgiveness that God has through Jesus our Savior. And so we can say with joy, as well as sometimes with trembling, speak, O Lord, for your servant is listening. Amen. Please stand. The peace of God that surpasses all understanding shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Amen.